Hey everyone, it's Michael, and here we are for part two of this Katana lightsaber build. For me, it's been a couple of seconds, for you it's been however long since you saw me in part one. If you haven't seen part one, you should definitely watch it. I will link it up here in the video and down in the description. You'll also find a list of components down there as well. Let's get rolling. Oh, and one more thing. If you haven't checked out the Saber Builders Academy on Facebook yet, definitely go do that. Link down below. First off, we have this beautiful Mercury Hope by Ignition Saber Company, customized by me in my previous video. And the chassis provided with the hilt, also customized by me. Those rods hold the chassis on the hilt, and those are the battery contacts. Both items come with the Saber. Here's the CCS NeoPixel connector and holder. This is a toggle switch and polycarbonate holder made by me. Here's the momentary switch. And the bag is a profi board, and here's its SD card. These are my accent NeoPixels for the chassis. There's my battery, and finally my speaker. Oh, and there's my wire too. Once your research is done and components selected, you need to draw your wiring diagram. Not only is it your roadmap while soldering, but the more of these you draw, the better you'll understand and recall circuit function and layout. When you first start looking at these, they may seem complex. I promise you that first 20 times I looked at them, they were overwhelming for me. But with repetition and making them yourself, they'll start to make sense. So see I've labeled my components and wire sizes for clarity, and there's room to make additional notes later. Alright, first I'm going to make sure that I have clean pads or terminals to solder to. Then I'll apply a small amount of flux to each of those points. Afterward, I'll pre-tin them by adding a small amount of solder. You'll notice that I tin the tip of my iron first, followed by briefly heating the pad, then applying solder wire where necessary. Out of frame, I clean my iron tip on a brass sponge between each point that I tin or solder. The keys here are to be quick, clean, and achieve a nice shiny layer of solder. I'm running my iron at 340 degrees Celsius, and that coupled with good solder and flux gives the result I'm looking for. Now I'm skipping ahead a little to save you some time. I turn on my battery test rig, flip my kill switch, you can see my accent LEDs come on, and the activation button turns on the blade. I always wire up my components prior to putting them inside the saber. That way I know they work beforehand. This is as simple as following the wiring diagram. You'll see me wire all these components up for the final install here shortly. So I can see my components are functioning as expected. Let's put it all together. The super thin insulation on this PTFE coated 22 gauge wire is a pain to strip, so I use an X-Acto knife. I don't recommend this method, but if you're patient and cautious, it works well. Freshly stripped wire rarely needs cleaning or flux, so I typically skip those steps and just pre-tin. The kill switch goes in the emitter first. So I'll attach my wires to its terminals and then put it in place. You'll notice in the previous clip, I have my wires cut to size. I usually lay out the routing and cut everything a little longer than I need before installing anything. Here I'll add my custom made switch holder and secure it with this set screw. And you can see that light pressure of that screw keeps it firmly in place. Here I'm adding wires to my NeoPixel connector, positive, negative, and data. It is super important on circuit boards like these to clean up your residue from soldering. A cotton swab and isopropyl alcohol does the trick. If you have any stubborn spots, you can gently scrape them with a toothpick. Now I'll snap the connector into its holder and place it in the emitter. holding in place with another set screw. All right, time for the activation switch.
after screwing into place in the hill. I solder up its wires. Now if you're paying close attention, you'll notice I'm deviating a bit from my wiring diagram. I've chosen to create the splice between the switch and the battery, rather than the connector and the switch, for obvious space restriction with the latter option. With the emitter installed, now I'm moving on to the chassis. I'll start out by soldering up my speaker. With those joints made and the wire twisted up neatly, I can move on to my battery negative terminal. Now we all know there's more than one way to skin a cat, so if my approach seems difficult or obtuse, I understand. Please take your own approach if that's the case. Basically, I'm securing the terminal with hot melt glue. And soldering while it's installed. Now I'm feeding the speaker wire through the same channel. And in this chassis, the speaker snaps snugly into place. Here's an alternative method on the front terminal that involves enlarging a hole in the chassis to feed the 22 gauge wire through. Again, use whatever method is comfortable for you. After that joint is soldered, I feed it through the hole and glue it in place. Now I'll make my data and power connections to this 10 pixel segment. Twist the wires together and carefully maneuver into the chassis. And then connect my single pixel within the board compartment. A very small dab or two of E6000 under the 10 pixel segment, as well as the single pixel, is advisable. Hot melt glue would also work here. In order to reconnect the chassis to the emitter, the threaded rods must go back into place. Then the chassis can be slid back over the rods. Just don't forget the board compartment cover like I did this time. With the chassis and cover in place, the knurled nuts can be put on and snugged down. And finally, connecting everything to the board. It may look like a confusing mess of all the same colored wire, but I promise I know what I'm doing. In no particular order, here's my connector data line, then my activation switch, then grounding the other switch leg. I'm connecting the NeoPixel positives to the battery, There's connector negative, followed by the second leg of my kill switch, then data for the accent pixels, and their negative line after that. There's battery negative, and finally the speaker connections. Cleaning up flux residue is important, so don't skip it. You should also be checking for other potential short circuits as well. Now that we're done soldering, it's safe for the SD card to go back in. Being attentive to polarity, the battery can be put in place. If you get it backwards, you'll burn out your pixels, so don't do that. And we have success. With function verified, I'll tidy up a few things. First, Diffusion in the battery compartment. For me personally, I don't mind leaving the slots open as they are normally covered by the battery and allow access if ever I need it. But as you can see, I'm implementing diffusion to blend and soften the light. A sanded bit of scrap plastic along with a thin strip of foam help achieve this goal.
To help access the USB port once the board is secured in place, I modified this magnetic cable and connector. The connector must be ground flat on opposing sides to clear the SD card and the cover. I'm also covering and diffusing this pixel similar to the battery compartment strip. Here I used two layers of plastic and ended up dyeing them black to blend in. You can see I removed the metal bits and shaved the cable's plastic down. At the same time, slotting the chassis. Oh, and the nuts tend to back themselves out, so I secure them with E6000. 